Hi, Kristen here from Whiskey Tangle Farms. I'm back. Uh, if you've been with us for a while, you may be wondering, WTF happened to Kristen at WTF? Um, so I'm kind of here to tell you guys what um, has been going on with me and why I was sort of absent. Uh, I popped in on a couple videos here and there and on some lives and stuff, but this is my first like video video in a while. Well, to be honest with you guys, this past winter has been a really rough road for me. Um, I have shared previously a few times on our channel about my struggles with mental health. And I talk about it a lot more in my personal life than on the channel. And there's a few reasons for that. One of the main reasons is just as a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a homesteader. So if you are struggling or anything like that, please, make sure that you are talking to your doctor and working with your doctor. This is not a replacement for that. I'm not a counselor, a therapist, anything like that. Like I'm not a professional. I feel like a lot of homestead channels don't necessarily talk about mental health and that's okay. Maybe they're not struggling with it, but I think that there's probably a lot more people out there struggling with it than what people are actually talking about. And that's fine. It's very personal and it's very hard to open up about those types of things. But I am, I have been feeling very moved to share what I've been going through. And the main reason for that is I wanna show that you can get through it. So I've struggled with depression and anxiety and just mental health in general since I was a teenager. So it's been a really long time. I've been doing this a while. Then when you add in winter in a Northern state where there's not a whole lot of sun or vitamin D, it can make the winters really, really hard pile in a couple of family deaths that we went through and some losses and things like that. And I just really didn't, I didn't deal with it well. I just didn't. I'm gonna be keeping things pretty general with this video. And um, the reason for that is the important thing that I really want to depict with this video is that even though we all have ups and downs in life and we have our struggles, I don't think that these struggles are really all that uncommon. Um, it can definitely feel that way when you're struggling, you feel very alone, like you're the only one going through this, but you're really not. And of course that's easy for me to say like in this current headspace, but I feel it's important to talk about and to show you again how I got through it and um, kind of what I did to get through it and my new, my new like mindset and outlook. And I'm hoping that it can help somebody else out there. Even if it helps one person, that's all like, that's totally worth it to me. I think it's really important that while you're going through these things and kind of navigating all of this, that it's really important to try to not lose yourself. I admit that I did kind of do that for a bit. Things were really confusing and I'll kind of get into that in a minute, but I let some of my closest friends and family know kind of like what was going on and what I was going through. Um, and it was kind of vague at the time. And even with that, the people that truly loved and cared about me were okay with it. And they said, hey, I get it. I'm sorry, whatever you're going through, if you need anything, I'm here. Um, when you're ready to reach out and talk about it, or if you want to talk about it, I'll be here. And that's honestly really what I needed. I just need a little bit of time to kind of step back, reflect, and sort of find myself again because I did sort of lose myself. Recently, I kind of had this epiphany moment where I realized I can't necessarily control what happens around me or to me or what people say about me or do to me, but I can control how I react to it. Can't necessarily control my feelings and that's okay, it's okay to feel things, but I can control how I use those feelings. And I, I just needed time. That's all I needed. And I'm so incredibly grateful to the people that were there for me and kind of helped me get out of this hole of yuck. I'm so incredibly grateful for my closest family and friends and my husband and my corgi latte. Hi, honey. Can you say hi? <laughs> say hello. Hello. It's a spicy potato. I love you. Okay. You want to lay down? Don't like that. It's the microphone. Stop it. If it wasn't for those people in my life that were kind of there to solidify and kind of help me find my way back again, I just, I don't know. I, <laughs> when you're going through difficult things, 
sometimes you find out who your real friends are. And that's not always the easiest pill to swallow because people that you thought were your friends actually aren't. But you do find out who really is there for you. And I can't put into words how grateful I am for the people that stuck by my side since this last September. They have been like a rock. They helped me find myself again. And I'm, I'm just so incredibly thankful and blessed for the people in my life. Kind of as a preface to what I went through uh, these past 10-ish months is I just kind of put too much trust into certain people and a certain group of people that I probably shouldn't have. And I poured a lot of energy into a place where it wasn't appreciated and it was just kind of undermined a lot. And that was really hurtful when you're pouring a lot of love and energy into something and it's just kind of thrown to the wayside it really sucks and it really makes you wonder like, okay, well, why did I do that? You know? So that was really hard for me. I do want to say that I'm incredibly grateful for the blessing to be able to take care of our hobby farm full time and producing content for social media. So <laughs> no, no barkies. She wanted to have a say. Don't you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully, Brandon has been taking care of most of the YouTube content for me, so I could just kind of sit back and find myself again. He's been incredibly supportive through this whole thing, um, and I'm glad that he was able to keep producing content for you guys. Social media is both a blessing and a curse, and I think we all know that in various forms. Social media is a blessing to be able to keep up with our loved ones, people we care about, events, education, community, outreach, that type of thing. But it can also kind of be a weakness in our society. The particular thing that I'm going to be talking about, I do notice it a lot more on YouTube and also probably Instagram than on other social media platforms, but it's definitely present everywhere. There is a very common trend of fascination with influencers on social media. Now, I admit that I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes you'll run across a profile or a channel and you're like, where has this content been all my life? This person that's running this is my new BFF. Shut up and take my money. Like I wanna buy all of their merch. And you kind of go down this rabbit hole to binge watch their stuff or look through all of their pictures, like everything. But to be honest, it's kind of a dangerous game because you're putting those people up on a pedestal. Now, I guess I can really only speak for myself, but even as a content creator, I do not want to be put on a pedestal. I am just a human, just like anybody else. It's totally okay to like somebody and um, appreciate their content. There's nothing wrong with that. So learning from them, that's always a good thing. And showing them support, that's awesome. I'm glad you're able to do that. But in my opinion, the line needs to be drawn at idolatry and like blind following. I've witnessed how sometimes circles of people can become so adulated with a content creator that even if that creator does something that's wrong or says something wrong, those people don't want to see it. They'll completely ignore it, refute it, pretend it doesn't exist, um, kind of backpedal and cover up for them. And that's not okay. I do just want to say it took me a while to find the correct term for what I was trying to describe. And that's how I came across adulation. The dictionary definition, I just wanted to read that so you guys know what I'm even trying to say because I had to search a while to find an appropriate word. The dictionary definition of adulation is excessive or blind adoration, reverence, or devotion. Basically, sometimes people follow others so blindly that they will completely deny a truth and censor anybody that says otherwise. It's kind of like idolatry. Another part of this borderline worship behavior is gossip. There might be slander, lies, twisting of words or what actually happened. It's something we've probably all dealt with at some point in our lives or will. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you're in middle school or an adult it's gonna happen at some point. I'll just be honest with you. Even though it kind of happens at all chapters of our life, you would think that it would be better amongst adults, right? Well, I found that that's kind of actually the opposite of the truth, unfortunately. And honestly, it's really unfortunate. Sometimes I don't even think that it's intentional. I think that some people just happen to have a tendency to open their mouths and say stuff without 
thinking about how it might impact others. I honestly really wish that people that gossip knew how those things are quite detrimental to other people and the lives of those other people. And sometimes I think that they don't stop to think, hey, is this actually factual? What's my intention with what I'm about to say? Is this going to accomplish anything or be positive or negative? What's going to happen as a result of what I'm going to say? The other unfortunate part of that is that I feel like it often affects others more than it affects the gossipy. But until they take a long, hard look in the mirror and realize that what they're doing and saying and portraying is destructive, it's not going to change. You can't tell somebody those things and have them see it. They need to kind of have an awakening and realize it for themselves. And until then, they're going to kind of keep running their mouths. And again, until they realize what's going on, it's going to be the people around them that are victims of that. The issue can kind of get perpetuated if it's occurring in like a whole group of multiple busybodies. It just, they all just kind of feed off of each other. Everything continues to snowball and things that probably weren't even an issue to begin with are suddenly huge mountains to climb. I don't know if you've ever heard the term turning a molehill, making a mountain out of a molehill. That's kind of what happens or snowballing. Like it starts as something very small and insignificant and then suddenly it's a huge deal. When people are feeding off of each other, it's also kind of like, you know, hearing through the grapevine or a game of telephone. Things get twisted more and more and more and the problem becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly you have this like huge monster and you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? And it's because people are just kind of gossiping and not thinking about what they're saying and how it's going to affect people. That in combination with lackluster communication, transparency, honesty can totally result in becoming detrimental to a relationship. And once again, the person that's really going to suffer most from this is the person being subjected to the gossip and who the gossip is about and who people are talking about. Because now you're to the point where things may have been partially true in the beginning and now suddenly it's something completely different. I actually recently learned that there's something called passive aggressive gaslighting. Now I will be the first to tell you that until I discovered this I thought that gaslighting was something kind of reserved only to describe situations that were romantic or familial but I found out that it can actually be at work or it can be your friends. It's not just like a domestic thing. But I had never heard of passive aggressive gaslighting. I actually ran across this term while I was doing some research about gossip, how to deal with it, how to navigate it. And I found this term and it was in an article about emotional and mental abuse actually. As I read through, this light bulb went off and it like everything fell into place it made complete sense. I was shocked. <laughs> when I found this article, I honestly felt seen and heard and things really made sense to me. I finally felt like I wasn't actually being just too sensitive and the things I was going through were legitimate. So again, I found this article because I was researching gossip, how to deal with things, how to navigate it, trying to kind of figure things out, how to get through this. The part of the article that actually talked about gossip said this. Negative gossip behind the gaslighty's back is a subversive form of personal attack that undermines the victim's reputation and credibility. Negative gossip often smears or grossly exaggerates the truth. The insidious and gaslighting nature of negative Negative gossip is that, after being repeated many times, people in gossip circles may accept unsubstantiated rumors as the truth and reject fact-finding even when hard evidence is presented to the contrary. The gaslighty is treated with unjustified bias, discrimination, or even contempt. Regular negative gossip is a cancer in relationships. It went on to list other forms of passive aggressive gaslighting. One of the examples that really stood out to me was 
many subtle digs and subversive judgments. And the description of that one is repeating, repeating subtle condescending remarks regarding the gaslighty's thoughts, personality, ability, appearance, and or background marginalizes and invalidates the gas lady to feel inadequate. There was another one that really stuck out to me as well, persistent negative humor and sarcasm. The description of this one says, disguised with a smile, negative humor can systematically tear down the gas lady by repeatedly making fun of and embarrassing someone in private and public situations, thereby gaining twisted power over the victim. Sarcasm can be utilized to put down an individual based on their physical appearance, personal characteristics, individual ability, socioeconomic and cultural background, gender and gender orientation, etc. Persistent negative humor and sarcasm are passive aggressive forms of psychological bullying. Honestly, this one hit very close to home with me, not because of me, but because of my husband, Brandon. There was actually a very specific situation that initially came to my mind, and I did think of other things as well, other examples of this that happened to Brandon, but this is the first thing that like came flooding to my mind when I read this. Those of you that know us or have been following us for a while know that Brandon has a really bad back, and we've shared that with you guys he is disabled and as much as I don't really like that word it it is what it is he has a brace on his leg he has very limited mobility in that leg and he has a lot of like muscle deterioration deterioration and that's actually why our great Dane Nano is being trained to be a service dog the doctor told Brandon that he has the back of an 85 year old man when Brandon overdoes it with his back it actually can cause permanent damage so I sometimes have to tell him like, don't overdo it. You need to sit down, go rest. I put my husband in timeout because I want to make sure that he is taking care of himself. There was a time when Brandon was sitting down to rest his back. It was after we had had several days of a lot of physical labor. Um, it was towards the end of summer. We had been doing a lot of stuff outside, which is good for him to an extent, um, but again, he has to take those breaks so that he doesn't push things too far, basically. So he was resting his back and he was sitting down like he's supposed to. And it was implied that he was just being lazy. And this did not sit well with me. And it came from someone that I never thought it would have come from. And I was shocked. I thought this person was a friend and I had a lot of respect for them, but that was disgusting. The fact that somebody had the audacity to imply that my husband was being lazy when he was resting his back is absolutely abhorrent and I take it to heart and I realize, yes, it's about Brandon, but that's my husband. I love him, obviously, or I wouldn't be married to him. So I definitely was hurt by this, even though it was about Brandon. I just have a problem with somebody treating him poorly. I'm not okay with it, especially when it's not even really something that he can control. It's not like he said something crappy. It was completely uncalled for. There was absolutely no reason for it other than being cruel. Again, like I said, there were other things apart from just that, but that thing stuck out to me a lot. And because it was such a big deal to me, it was kind of a turning point, honestly, where I realized that maybe people that you respect and think are your friends are not because I thought that the person that said that was a friend and respected us. And if that were true, they would have never said that. This article actually listed seven different um, like forms or examples of passive aggressive gaslighting. And honestly, they all fit. Um, I went down the list and it's just all persistent, social exclusion. It just, it blew my mind. So I'm here to tell you, I guess, that if you're experiencing these things at work, or other professional interactions or home or family, domestic, whatever, like it's a thing and it's real and your feelings are valid. And unfortunately these things 
are all kind of sneaky, I guess. So whether it's a coworker or a friend, it's still gaslighting. It is still mental abuse, emotional abuse, and it is still not okay. Once I realized what was truly going on, I had a lot of feelings of guilt. And even now, sometimes I catch myself feeling a little bit guilty. And you might be wondering, what do you have to feel guilty about? And it's the fact that I gave um, this other person or these other people the power to do those things to me. I trusted them and shared things with them and became close to them on my own accord. Like nobody forced me to do so. And I didn't see through their act. I let this happen. And honestly, it that yes, that's true. But you also can't be going through life expecting that to happen in every relationship. You can't just not trust everybody. But then it's kind of like, well, where do you draw the line? I am the type of person that for most of my life, aka all of my life, I have poured a lot into relationships of people that I care about. And I probably give too much of myself too fast. And I know that. But on the other side of that, I have always struggled with setting healthy boundaries. I feel guilty about it. It also created a situation where I was surrounded by toxicity. And it's been from people that I never thought it would have been because I trusted them and because I gave too much trust too fast. And I gave power to people that just quite frankly didn't deserve it. But I'm here to tell you that you can get through it. I did. And granted it was not fun, zero out of 10, I would not recommend it. But I did get through it. And to anybody that might be going through something similar or you have or you will, you can get through it as well. I am now back, I'm stronger than ever, and I'm more me than I have been in a really long time. Now, I do want you to know that it is okay to trust people, but you need to make sure that you're setting healthy boundaries. I have been actively um, practicing setting healthy boundaries myself, and I've learned to speak up for myself and defend myself when necessary. I am no longer a doormat. If I feel the need to speak my truth, I'm going to, and I'm not going to allow somebody else to bully me or intimidate me into censorship. I'm going to speak my truth. There is absolutely no reason to allow somebody that doesn't respect or value me to try to silence me because I respect and value myself more than that and you should do the same. So in case you miss that, it is okay to set healthy boundaries. Do not feel guilty about it. In fact, you will find that the people that care most about you and for you and your well-being will be the ones that are totally okay with that. They'll be like, okay. The people that are gonna have problems with the boundaries that you set are the ones that probably need it the most because they don't know where to draw the line. So you have to, and just know that they might retaliate and that's okay, let them. If someone's gonna get upset about something you said, especially when you're extremely careful about what you were going to say and being clear in your intentions and it was extremely well thought out, let them be upset. That's not, those aren't your people and that's okay. Just let them go do their own thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person. They're just not your people. It is extremely important to me to make sure that I surround myself with people that love, respect, and value me. I have no need or want to put myself in a situation where the things that I do and bring to the table are not appreciated or they're undermined. I have a newfound appreciation for the people that I found are in my circle and have my back. I would much rather be surrounded by bona fide friends than people that pretend or suck all the positivity out of me and contribute to toxicity. And I don't think that anybody deserves to be in a situation where they're feeling that way. Your mental peace is worth so much more than that. It takes a lot of time to build up positivity in a society where we're always having to give a lot of ourselves. So when you come across one or two or a few people that take a lot of that energy and positivity, it your meter drains so much faster than it takes to build it up. So just avoid that. Unfortunately, I think it's just human nature that negativity tends to far outweigh 
the positive in our lives. I wanted to share a quote by Babe Ruth. The quote is, the loudest boos will always come from the cheapest seats. People who invest the least in you will have the most to say about you. Trust your work and keep your circle tight. And I feel like that is super relevant to all of this. I'm keeping my circle tight from now on and I hope that you do too. I hope that you also have the courage to walk away from people or situations that are hurting your heart, even if it means having to walk away from something that you love. And for that reason, Whiskey Tango Farms will not be attending QuailCon 2023. It has been a decision that we have thought through a lot and it's not something that we take lightly. It was a hard decision. Quail Con was my idea, my brainchild, my baby. It was very near and dear to my heart, so this was incredibly difficult to decide on. But I know my worth. I know my husband's worth. I know my family's worth. I know my farm's worth. I'm not going to subject ourselves to an environment where that worth is not appreciated or seen. It's my hope that anybody watching this that might be wondering about their self-worth, that they're able to find courage. I hope they find courage to invest in people, places, and situations where they're fully, absolutely, and entirely valued for who they are. It's my hope that you are able to find those people in your life like Babe Ruth talked about, find your circle and keep it tight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helps somebody, even one person, and I will be seeing you on upcoming videos. Bye guys. Blessings.